It's something I've wanted to do. Matt Berry has climbed mountains all over the world, so when he decided to hike the 18-mile Grand Traverse last August, he came prepared. The goal for this particular trip was to do it in one push in like a 24-hour period. The 35-year-old Utah set off with his equipment and climbing partner at 4.30 in the morning. As the sun rose, they made their way 6,000 feet up the mountain. Five hours in, they decided to take a break. As I was scrambling down a pretty easy little section to get to our resting location. Not even really sure to this day exactly what happened, but I slipped in a in a non-ideal spot. Matt plunged head first down the mountain, smashing into rocks, bouncing off ice and moving fast. He tried to stop himself but couldn't and knew he was headed straight toward a ledge with a massive drop. At the base of all of that, there is about a 2,500 foot cliff and I stopped 10 to 15 feet shy. Matt had traveled around 600 feet in about 15 seconds and his body was beat, bruised, and he could barely move. He yelled to his climbing partner that he was alive and his friend called 911. I was able to actually get down some water. I was super dehydrated from the adrenaline dump and get out my medical kit and start tending to my wounds and stop a bunch of my major bleeds. Lying feet away from a cliff, unable to walk or crawl, Matt went into meditative breathing as he waited for help to arrive. Snow and ice above him began melting as the weather warmed up. Maybe like 30 minutes after I had fallen, a couple microwave-sized pieces of granite cut off a few hundred feet above me. The first block kind of flew maybe a couple feet over my right hand, right shoulder. And then the other one actually bounced in the snow to my left and, and slammed into my left leg. After two and a half hours, the Teton County search and rescue team arrived. Matt was flown off the mountain and taken to Ermac in Idaho Falls, where two surgical teams were waiting in the trauma center. I had an open compound hip fracture. I lacerated my liver. I had degloved my arm. I had a puncture wound that I could see my quad muscle and I lacerated my left ankle open. He was in in uh, pretty rough shape. Derek Northrup was Matt's physical therapist in the Ermac rehab unit. Every day for three hours, Derek worked to get Matt better. We just worked on lots of little things to, to get his movement, get his legs moving and his, his uh, arms moving, get his strength going. Matt had to relearn how to walk and how to go up and down stairs, but his first day here in the rehab unit, he couldn't even take one step up the staircase. But on his sixth day of rehab, he not only went down six flights of stairs, but he went all the way back up too. First floor, time to go back up. He did two consecutive, you know, 120 stairs. Pretty amazing feat. I, I, I haven't had anybody do that before. After lots of physical therapy, patience, and support from his girlfriend and family, Matt was released from the hospital after two weeks. There's been some aches and pains over the past year, but he's back to hiking and planning adventures. It hasn't really scared me away from climbing or going back into the mountains. In a, about a month from now, I'm heading out to Greece for a little while to do some climbing. Matt knows when he fell down that mountain last August, things could have ended differently. He's thankful to be alive and to all those who helped. Extremely grateful for my girlfriend and my mom, and my climbing partner and the rescuers and all the staff at Ermac for putting me together and keeping me psyched and motivated and yeah, it's awesome. In Idaho Falls, Nate Eaton, eastidahonews.com.